For many, fascinated by the lives of British royals, tonight is a pretty good night. All 400 pages of Prince Harry's new book, Spare, can be poured over. My mother legendarily said there were three people in her marriage, but her maths was off. She left Willie and me out of the equation. Despite the book leaking last week, readers now seeing those bombshell revelations in context and even hearing them in Harry's own voice. The estranged royal wasting no time digging into the family drama in the very first pages, describing a tense conversation with Charles and William at Philip's funeral. It got so heated that Pa raised his hands. Enough. He stood between us, looking up at our flushed faces. Please, boys, don't make my final years a misery. And in just the second chapter, the Duke of Sussex revealing the stinging reality of the book title, a phrase he says was not just used in tabloids, but within his own family. I was 20 the first time I heard the story of what Pa allegedly said to Mummy the day of my birth. Wonderful. Now you've given me an heir and a spare, my work is done. Prince Harry also repeatedly referring to now Queen Consort Camilla as the other woman, who he frequently accuses of leaking stories to the British press. We sensed the presence of the other woman because we suffered the downstream effects. Throughout the book, the prince writing about how his mother's death impacted his mental health, sharing that while visiting Paris once, he made the driver go through the same tunnel where she died. We zipped ahead, went over the lip of the tunnel's entrance, the bump that supposedly sent Mummy's Mercedes veering off course. But the lip was nothing. We barely felt it. Harry goes on to chronicle his evolving relationship with Meghan, the pushback from his family. Made the driver go through the same tunnel where she died. We zipped ahead, went over the lip of the tunnel's entrance, the bump that supposedly sent Mummy's Mercedes veering off course. But the lip was nothing. We barely felt it. Harry goes on to chronicle his evolving relationship with Meghan, the pushback from his family, and the fallout. They took it all away, I thought. Even my military associations. I'd no longer be Captain General of the Royal Marines, a title handed down by my grandfather. Furthermore, the statement continued, we'd no longer be doing any service whatsoever for the Queen. They made it sound as if there'd been an agreement between us. There was nothing of the sort. The fanfare surrounding today's release, drumming up chatter and sales. Readers lining up at bookstores at midnight. Spare already becoming the fastest selling non-fiction book ever in the UK. And the audiobook now a bestseller on Amazon, Spotify and Audible. I like him. I like him. I like the royal family. I was here when Diana bought her book out and um, I just, I queued up then. And uh, now I'm queuing up again and I'm enjoying myself. But some readers not so keen on the full court press the Prince is now pushing on Buckingham Palace. I thought it was completely unnecessary. I hope he puts it all behind him and moves forwards. But who knows with it? Harry calls into question his father's generosity, alleging he asked whether Meghan will carry on working. Well, darling boy, you know there's not enough money to go around. I can't pay for anyone else. Was Pa, with all his millions from the hugely lucrative Duchy of Cornwall, trying to say that our captivity was starting to cost him a bit too much? And towards the end of the book, Harry, with a fine Meghan, didn't come to the Queen's bedside in her final moments. He said I was welcome at Balmoral, but he didn't want her. Many now left wondering if this is the final chapter for Prince Harry and the royal family. I was brought into the world in case something happened to Willie. I was summoned to provide backup, distraction, diversion, and, if necessary, a spare pot. And with that, Keir Simmons joins us now from London. So, Keir, now that the book is officially out, have we heard from the palace or any member of the royal family? Because there are so many accusations in there. There are so many. And no, we haven't. And I, I guess that's probably not surprising because there is a lot to pick through. There are royal events later this week. The Prince and Princess of Wales, for example, are likely to be seen out at an event. In the coming days, will they say anything? We don't know. But, you know, Tom, I mean, just take one example. Prince Harry's description of the days after Diana died when he was told by his father. We've always thought that the Queen was there consoling him, and that's one of the reasons she didn't come back down to London. He doesn't mention that. He doesn't seem to mention that anywhere in the book. So I think there's a lot for historians to find here. 
uh, and question, but also correct the record. And that goes for the royal family, too. Uh, this is controversial, but it's also very difficult. It's family and it's detailed. And, and, and I think all of that means if we do hear from them, I'm going to going to, you know, take a risk here. I'm going to say it will be a while, potentially. And then, Kier, on, on the lighter side, there, there is some videos, some photos that are, that are making headlines here in the United States, and they are of Prince Harry doing tequila shots with uh, the late-night talk show host Stephen Colbert. Yeah. Uh, it was part of a bit. He's going to be on The Colbert Show. I, I was going to ask you, you know, I, I was thinking, I mean, for us, this doesn't seem that wild here in the United States, but he is still a prince. Um, I can't imagine Prince William doing that. I definitely can't imagine King Charles Charles doing that. How is this playing in, in the UK? There's lots of stories in his book of him doing shots and all kinds of other things <laughs> in his in his teenage years, in his wild years, you might call them, Tom. I don't know. I mean, you're taking shots at your family, then go do shots. Sounds kind of kind of like a natural progression to me. <laughs> Listen, here's the thing. There is going to be a lot of backlash. There really is. And again, I mentioned that there's a lot of detail in this book. I think that backlash is going to take time. Let me give you a serious example. He, in this book, picks out particular journalists and is incredibly disparaging about them. And now those journalists are answering. There are others who are going through it, historians, for example, and questioning some of the facts and the detail. So I think there is going to be a slow burn of backlash over this book. And here's the irony about that. You get this sense that Prince Harry is trying to pull himself away from this, escape from this, but he can't. Because <laughs> these stories about Prince Harry, and we're seeing it with the sales of the book, these stories about Prince Harry are selling newspapers. They're, they're earning clicks. They're still going to be written. And I, I, you just worry that there's going to be a vicious cycle here as we look ahead to, to the months, maybe even years ahead. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.